uh, uh, so right now the internet has been uh, about 40 years old and right now there are many problems like uh, mobility, security, routing scalability and so on. And my view is that uh, we have to at least, uh, we have to do at least two things. Uh, first one, uh, we have to redefine the IP address. The semantics of an IP address has been changing a lot for 40 years. So we have to do something. The, uh, another aspect that I'd like to stress is the uh, security part. Right now, any host can send any packet to uh, any destination. So we have to uh, counter some of the uh, malicious uses of internet in, in some ways. Uh, let me talk about the IP address first. Uh, so this, uh, this looks silly, very easy. Uh, let me put it this way. Does source IP address indicate the, uh, the original host that generate this payload, this packet? Uh, not in general. And same thing happens with this destination address. Uh, what I'm saying is that 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, an IP address originally indicates the, uh, the endpoint, original source, and final destination. So that's uh, so-called end-to-end principle. I think everybody knows this uh, principle. So IP address uh, serves as both locator so that we can relay the packet to the destination. And also it serves as an identifier so that uh, two guys, two hosts can identify the, uh, the packet of which connection. However, uh, the current role of IP address is not always uh, indicating endpoint. For instance, uh, NAT, tunnels, and overlays. Also, uh, it cannot serve as an identifier. For instance, mobility, multi So, uh, then, uh, what should be an IP address? Uh, just locator. We should relieve the, uh, the IP address of its burden. Uh, and the locator of, not the locator of endpoint, but the locator of next transit point, like uh, NAT box, tunneling endpoint, and some, for instance, some mobility agents in uh, mobile IP solutions, something like that. So uh, we can say that this is kind of transit by transit model as opposed to uh, the legacy end-to-end -end principle. Then, uh, where is the uh, endpoint identifier? Uh, I'd like to propose to use some kind of uh, content identifier. Uh, for instance, we can uh, insert content identifier somewhere. It doesn't have to be here, but we need to put content identifier somewhere uh, in the packet. So uh, IP address indicates the, uh, the previous transit point and next transit point. And the, the final destination is indicated by this uh, content identifier. So content identifier is globally routable and unique. So uh, right now, I propose to use uh, domain name or public IP address and port number or its indicator. For instance, uh, this HTTP URI can be a good content identifier. It's globally routable and unique. And of course, uh, some path information can be added. So uh, that's the, uh, the reduced role of IP address and the, uh, the additional, uh, and we have to add content identifier. And as for the uh, security aspect, as I mentioned, uh, the anyone can send any packet to anyone. So that's why we allow uh, DDoS attacks and many uh, malicious attacks. So I'd like to propose to use two uh, new service paradigms uh, of ISPs. So instead of, instead of delivering arbitrary packets, uh, ISPs deliver content to the users. So with these uh, two mechanisms, uh, I'd like to propose uh, Kona so the, the majority of internet traffic is already content-oriented, as you know. 
So with Kona, uh, we have to use new model for uh, IP subnet. The interaction between the end host and the access router. So let's call it solicitor and agent. So an access router becomes an agent. Now it knows the, uh, which content identifier is requested by uh, uh, a solicitor or end user. Okay? So instead of sending any arbitrary package, a solicitor uh, sends some content request message to the agent. I want some content by specifying some HTTP URI, for instance. An agent will uh, reply with the, uh, the data. So end host cannot know uh, destination IP address, for, for instance. End host cannot contact DNS. So it helps to prevent the uh, DNS poisoning, for instance. So suppose uh, this is a client and this is a publisher. So again, publisher also uh, is attached to its own agent. And the, its domain name is registered with the uh, DNS. And agent IP address, public IP address, will be uh, registered in the DNS. So when host requests some content from the publisher, its agent will contact DNS and it will retrieve the, uh, the public IP address of the uh, corresponding agent. So with this uh, agent, uh, we can do some policing. For instance, uh, an agent can perform proactive measures for security. For instance, to prevent a DDoS attack. For instance, end host cannot generate too many requests, especially to the same server, for instance. And also agents can analyze the behaviors of solicitors much easily because end host or solicitors always specify the uh, content identifier. Right? So content requests by solicitors are accountable. And also uh, agents can collaborate if DDoS attack is uh, happening in a wide area uh, scale. Uh, there can be other merits of agents, like uh, cache and forward networks. So it can cache the content. So flash cloud phenomenon can be uh, easily handled by this agent. Additionally, uh, agents can form some kind of overlay so that uh, so even if the, the corresponding agent of a particular host does not hold the, uh, the content, it can ask other agent to relay the content if, if, if the content is in the overlay. And for instance, in the mobile environment, uh, agent failure may not matter because the solicitor can find out the other uh, agent. And it can also uh, it can specify the, uh, the content identifier. And the agent always direct this content request message to the, uh, the the agent of the other uh, publisher. Uh, this, this kind of interaction can be uh, happening between different ISPs. Uh, that's what I propose. So uh, gateways can specify some what content is requested. And the other ISP can reply with the uh, content data file. So that uh, the, the traffic between ISPs can be accountable. So if there is a DDoS attack happens at this publisher, uh, the ISP B can figure out which ISP can send how many uh, uh, requests, something like that. Uh, uh, let me talk about the details of how uh, the content request message is relayed. So here, uh, host one wants to retrieve some content from the server, or host two. So host one is attached to agent one, and host two is attached to uh, agent two. For convenience, suppose there are uh, two routers, uh, legacy router one and content aware router C1. 
So H1 sends a content request message to its agent. So its source destination ad address is H1A1. So this is kind of one transit. And A1 contact DNS and figure out the, uh, the public address of this agent 2. So it relays a uh, content request message. Here, source destination address pair is A1 and A2. Uh, if some intermediate content aware router, which is compliant with the uh, Kona, if it wants to intervene, then uh, it can intervene. So, so in this case, uh, it re replaced the message uh, by changing the address. So now it comes, so source destination pair becomes from C1 to A2. So in this way, this uh, content aware router, C1, can cache the content or something like that. So uh, to be brief, as the uh, content request message traverses, uh, content information based entry, something like a uh, routing entry, is set up backwards so that these uh, agents and content aware routers can relay the data toward the, uh, this host, H1. So uh, end host behind uh, net boxes uh, can be uh, first class citizens. So now with this corner architecture, uh, private addresses are fine. So this helps mitigate the, uh, the issues of IP address exhaustion and routing scalability due to uh, site multi-homing. And I think it's, uh, more, it can easily interwork with the uh, long disruption or delay networks like DTN or CNF. And as I mentioned, uh, agent can play a critical role in uh, security aspect. So security, especially accountability, is enhanced. And mobility and multicast, I think it can, uh, they can be better handled. For instance, uh, if host moves to a new agent, because of mobility, host detects a uh, content delivery failure because the data is not coming anymore, or it detects new IP address with the uh, with a new agent. Then it sends uh, it merely sends a new content request message, and the new agent will uh, relay the uh, content request message toward the the, the publisher, so the uh, the content file will be continued to continue. Uh, to be uh, delivered to the, uh, the host. Uh, in multicast, uh, so right now, IP multicasting uses class D addresses, which has uh, some issues in address assignment or management, especially in cross-domain aspect. But, with, but in the corner uh, architecture, there's a content identifier. So, so suppose A is the agent of the, uh, the original multicast source. Uh, for convenience, I, already, uh, I only drew the, draw the uh, uh, agent or content aware routers. So suppose a host attached to agent E joins this multicast session. Then the content aware router and the source agent will create the, uh, the routing entry or content information based on entry. And if a host in G joins, so it content request message relays toward A. So now C uh, got the message. So C creates this multicast routing entry. Uh, of course, there are, are some issues. For instance, uh, interdomain uh, content delivery performance because they do not merely relay package. They have to send content request message, and then they deliver a content, content file. So there is some issue in the uh, in, uh, interdomain uh, content delivery. And also, uh, if there are many solicitors uh, in a single network, uh, there can be some scalability issue. Uh, but it can be mitigated, so some part of Solicitors or end hosts will be attached to F. Some other hosts will be attached to E or C or something like that. And there is also a scalability issue in terms of number of 
contents delivered at the same time. But right now, uh, NetFPJ router can handle about 10,000 ongoing flows at the same time. So it may not be matter, especially at the access network. Uh, the another issue in security is that uh, agents can be compromised. So right now, uh, agent is the first line of defense and also uh, last line of defense. So it's uh, still issue. Uh, let me stop here. So.